Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it if you've you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Zachary Gio. And this is Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting in the United States, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it. Yes, sir, even if it is fresh-grade diesel. Just kidding, don't do that. That'll actually kill you. (laughs) Yeah, please don't. (laughs) That would be terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Get you a nice gallon-sized can of diesel and just... (laughs) Oh, yeah. Mm. Hello, Hello, Impa. (laughs) Well, this is part two of... Well, technically, it was supposed to be Zelda month. Um, Zelda two months? I don't know. Um, Zelda... (laughs) Here. <laughs> this is part two of our Oracle of Ages and Seasons episode. So in part one, we did Oracle of Ages. Now we're talking about Oracle of Seasons. Hell yeah, brother. And, and uh, honestly, man, I'm actually really uh, excited to get into this because, you know, a whole new dimension of these two games was opened up to me the second I started a linked game. So, of oh, course, I, sure. yeah, I started with Oracle of Ages. And then I'm playing Link- Oracle of Seasons in a linked game. And you actually told me that that was the best order to do it in. Yes, um, I, that's the exact same way I started it when I was younger. You know, you start with Oracle of Ages and then you go into Seasons. Because Ages kind of focuses more on the puzzle aspect of The Legend of Zelda, while Seasons focuses more on combat and use of, like, Items to fight and defeat enemies and stuff like that. And actually, as we're discussing this, I am I just got an Elgato and I am streaming Oracle of Seasons in the Discord while Ash and I are talking. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, absolutely. It's definitely the best idea to do ages first, um, and then to go straight into seasons. It's just it's it's a more fluid way to play the games, and plus the end of seasons feels a little bit more epic compared to the end of ages, and so it's kind of like you're working towards that finale and it's really cool because at the end of a linked game obviously you get to fight twin roba and ganon but that's something we'll discuss further on in the episode yeah so i I gotta agree with you about oracle of ages being a good starter game and it's interesting because seasons is technically the like the the default starting point like usually like in timeline listings and official materials it's listed first but yeah. i mean there is no like canonical order to these games because they can be played in any order but i i gotta agree with you i think it just makes a lot more sense uh at the very least from a gameplay perspective due to the fact that seasons is more action oriented throws yeah. you at enemies so having a little bit of combat experience fighting uh, Oracle of Ages tougher enemies actually helps. Plus the little head start that you get as a result of playing a linked game. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, when it comes to just playing these games in general, they're not that difficult. I mean, unless you're a little kid, like I was when I started them. When you're kind of a seasoned gamer like both Ash and I, it's not really that difficult to get into it, but it is nice to have kind of that head start. Uh, going into ages definitely gives you a little bit more of a grace period before things start to pick up while seasons just kind of throws you right in the middle of the action. As you can see from this playthrough, you guys can't see it, but Ash and I can. Um, Ash, you can see that it kind of immediately throws you into the first dungeon and you're immediately going in and solving puzzles and fighting enemies and stuff like that. So it's really interesting. Um, I, I always thought that seasons was harder, but ages uh, makes you use your brain on puzzles more. And so... It's it's cool to think about. It's cool to experience many. I've done ages first. I've done seasons first, and 
ages first is definitely the way to go. Oh, I'm yeah. And, and I think the complete experience of this is similar to the uh, Resident Evil 2 complete experience is, is, is playing both playthroughs in, in, in both orders. So, For sure. you know, uh, like uh, the Leon A, Claire B, Claire A, Leon B thing, you know, there's a whole flow to the way that the Oracle games appro- uh, approaches 100% completion. And, and, and that's because um, you play through the first game and then you play through the linked game, which completes the storyline and uh, results in that final boss fight. And then you get the chance to uh, restart a playthrough with a new secret password that carries over from to uh, the next game, uh, allowing you to start, what was it called, the uh, hero mode or hero's quest? Oh, uh, you're talking about like when you beat one game and take it over? The hero uh, secret. The hero secret. All right, so... Yeah, you get the the link secret, which is the first one that allows you to kind of continue the story, and then the hero secret that allows you to go back and play through that original adventure with the mark of the Triforce, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so the hero secret is is kind of like a new game plus, actually. Uh, sort of, and, and uh, sort of right. It's it's kind of like an early attempt at like a new game plus situation, and essentially, it's it's allowing you to start the the pair of games over again and and play it in the opposite order and there's actually an incentive to do that yeah and, for sure and so like this game screams 100% completion in it because of all of that if only it weren't for the uh the grindy R, you know rng mechanics you know as far as getting uh all of the rings and whatnot <laughs> you know i never actually did that i just kind of play through the games and do their story. But yeah. That's but, not for everybody. And across four four playthroughs, I mean, you have time to do it, but it's whether or not you're willing to invest the time. Thankfully, you know, emulators uh, make that much easier. I did find myself making save states in order to get, you know, uh, that last uh, heart piece from Maple, for instance. I mean, that is what I would consider, you know, for completion. But yeah. all in all... Each of these games, both Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, are pretty short on their own, similar to Resident Evil 2. But when you play, the fact that you get to play through them four times for a complete experience, uh, I think is what adds to it. Or at least twice, right? You at least have to do both games. And so they add up to a complete experience. Um, it's honestly an innovative system, and I'd love to see Zelda do something like this again. Yeah, I think it would be cool if they did it again, but I also think that it would be kind of a step back. Because with what we have now, with this open world formula, with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, as long as they tweak the storytelling a little bit, I think you have the perfect Zelda game. That's true. But that's for a mainline Zelda game. I'm thinking more in lines of, like, the 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 in-between games. I don't want to call them spinoffs, but, you know, the, the entry... The, the top-down experiences. Yeah, yeah, your, your 2D Zelda games. Yeah, for sure. Like, this is where it started for me, and I've always loved this formula where you're kind of given a quest and you just take part in it and you just keep going until it's done. Like, whether you have to find the pendants at the beginning of A Link to the Past and then continue freeing the spirit maidens, or you find the eight essences of nature and time like you do in Oracle of Seasons and, and Ages. Like, right now, what I'm doing is I'm working... Oh, these are wall masters, oh, and man. I hate them in these games. They're so annoying. Oh! I I know. You know how many times I've rewinded on the emulator in order to (laughs) to not get teleported. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. Um, for those of you who can't see what's going on, I'm about to actually fight the Gleok that's at the end of the gnarled root dungeon at the beginning of Oracle of seasons. And I'm in the room right before the boss room where you fight off all the blue wall masters. There's like three per section. Yeah. They're easy once you get used to them, but, um, this style of Zelda is how it always was for me, which is why when I first started, when I first saw Breath of the Wild, I was excited for it, but I was a little skeptical because I knew that they were completely taking the Zelda series and flipping it on its head. Right. Which, it works. Tears of the Kingdom is my favorite game ever now. I love it, and actually, after we record this, I'm probably going to do the Fire Temple with Ash. But um, if they were to continue doing that formula on, let's say, the Switch or the Switch 2, whatever gets released. I think if they remade these games, it would work very well. 
But as far as mainline Zelda games, sticking to that 3D open world formla- format is perfect. I hope that they do re like. There have been rumors that they're going to remaster these games, but I I don't know. What would you think about that? Do you think these games are okay as they are, or do you think they could make them better with remakes? Oracle of Ages and Seasons. I would love to see a remake in the vein of the Link's Awakening remake. Oh, dude, it's so good. I would just like the music to be a little bit more full because the Link's Awakening remake felt a little flat to me. Like it was yeah, good. You mentioned that last episode. Yeah, the light instrumentation is it's a bit uh when it when it comes in terms of hit or miss it's a little bit miss for me so yeah if they went with fully orchestrated with um multiple instruments uh that would i i think i think be best uh in order to uh yeah and you know like a lot of remakes do there should be an option to listen to the original at least listen to the original music uh, yeah if for not, sure if not switch to it um, oh, dude, that'd be that'd be weird though. Playing with remade graphics, but like eight bit music, or is this sixteen bit? This is sixteen bit, isn't it? Sixteen bit, I believe. Um, yeah. Resident Evil Two remake did it though. <laughs> I keep bringing up that game, but hey, man, if you like a game, use its references. Like, why not? I'm about to go name this baby for real. Uh, the baby. Oh, yeah. So, the baby. <laughs> Zach, I was I was watching your playthrough, and I'm 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 pretty high. So I was I forgot what I was watching and I and I, I, I I'm looking at my computer screen and I'm like, man, this guy, whoever's whoever's playing this is, is really good. And I was like, oh, wait, that's Zach <laughs> dildo. Yes. Naming the baby dildo. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah, dude. Gotta name the baby dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, you know, when I used to play like minecraft and land multiplayer yeah i would do um i would make my name dildo swaggins dildo swaggins dildo yeah swaggins. i i used to say something else but i can't say that I, i'm pretty podcast. sure i used that on um town of salem too oh see all right so this is the ring that you get for doing the hero's quest the the, the evil king ganon defeated uh-huh. and i just i just wear that the entire game <laughs> that's it <laughs> What is what does the ring do? Uh, I think it's just a symbol of you defeating the That's evil it. king. Gang. Yeah, it's like so. some of them are commemor- commemorative. Like you get like a a ring for uh, slaying a thousand beasts, um, yep. and I think you get something for for uh, breaking a thousand si- or a hundred signs. Yes, you do. You do indeed. There it is. So it's I've called been... the victory ring. The victory ring, nice. Yep. So the it's just gang. commemorative effort. Um, yeah, man, I, I fucking love, uh, these games, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, and I'm glad that I had a, I got a chance to really get into them. Um, and I'm glad I really actually got to finally play Oracle of Seasons because I've always tried to play Ages and I never finished Ages. So I never, I never started Seasons. Yeah, I was about to say the end of Ages is so good. The fight with Mary is fantastic. It is fantastic, and we definitely talked about it. But um, it was nice to finally be able to get into this experience. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I've been playing through ages, and I actually I, – I haven't completed it yet, actually, because uh, long story short, and the reason why this episode is, is as delayed as it is, part of the reason is that uh, <laughs> my Switch I left in San Antonio, Texas – uh, when I came to visit for the holidays, um, San Antonio slash Lake Hills, uh, where my parents live. And uh, I came back to Houston without my switch and my phone charger, mind you. So my mom had to mail it to me. And then get this, it took like two or three weeks to ship the damn thing. There was some weird uh, issue with UPS or U- with USPS. So yeah, I was without my switch for a good, like three weeks or so. Yeah, I feel and that pain. I wanted to complete Oracle of seasons. I wanted to play this. I wanted to record this episode, but man, oh! life got in the fucking way. <laughs> Damn. I was doing so well. I was doing that little quest where you have to follow Rosa into the Uh huh. Oh, uh... Yeah, so this game has Sabrosia, which, you know, uh, Oracle of Ages had two maps, which was the past and the present map. And so yeah, sure. Oracle of Seasons not only has the seasons-changing mechanic, 
uh, which is the the namesake of the game that affects the overworld, but it has an additional map that is Subrosia. Um, I don't know, kind of like an early depths, I guess. <laughs> in a way. It kind of, it feels like uh, the dark world from A Link to the Past, but not quite as similar to, you know, the main overworld. It feels more, kind of, it, it's different enough from the past in ages because seasons came second. Um, it's different enough from ages in the past to make it kind of like its own gimmick, even though you're, playing in Holodrum versus playing in Labrina. It's enough to make it feel unique, but it's like this wonder, not this wonderland, like kind of like this underworld of bubbly lava and volcanic activity with these weird hooded people. It's hilarious. It, but it's, it's underneath the surface, which I think is why I thought of the depths. Um, yeah. So I, I actually thought that that was kind of cool in a sense. Um, it's actually a smaller map than the overworld, uh, but it's very interesting. In fact, it has its own currency. Uh, you actually have to uh, to get uh, ore, right? Yes, sir. You have to get uh, Sabrosian ore, I think. Yeah. So, like, and I'm you, dancing right now. You dig up be- dig up bits of ore uh, instead of rupees, and it's like a separate uh, currency system. You know what I found uh, in this game that uh, I actually stocked up on rupees very quickly. I did not have the same experience with Oracle of Ages, but in seasons by like, I don't know, the third or fourth dungeon, I was already at 999 rupees and had nothing to burn it on. <laughs> I got the boomerang. And, and yeah, it's like, I, I, the only thing I could even spend money on was like buying, was appraising a ring. And then it turned out to be a ring I already had. And I actually got more money back. Great. <laughs> Another 10 rupees wasted. <laughs> oh yeah, and I like this game because you have to focus on two different types of currency, like the ore chunks and the rupees, versus you know ages having just rupees. It kind of makes for a different mechanic as far as buying, selling, and trading with people, and it it's it's very fascinating to kind of check how the system works, and it's a lot of fun to play uh, the mini games in Sabrosa, and there's like two, you know how there's a trading sequence in Ages? Yeah. There's one in Seasons as well, and it's the same thing, to get the Sacred Noble Sword, but it takes place in both uh, both worlds, and by helping both Sabrosians and Hylians, oh, are they Hylians? No, it's not Hylians. Uh, Holo- ho- ho- Holodrons. Holodromonians? <laughs> I don't know. Holodromoniamonionans. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting to have how the systems work differently as opposed to just having a difference in where you're at in the timeline. Yeah. So so there's a whole sequence. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Whenever I said that this game opened up a new dimension for me playing the linked game experience, because there's this sort of synergy. And what you do is uh, in, in, in my case, you know, I played through ages and then I got into seasons and seasons. I would get a password from a character who mentioned I should go talk to somebody in Labrina from ages yeah. and give them this password essentially. So you go back, I would load up my, my Oracle of ages file. It's really easy on uh, uh Nintendo switches, Game Boy emulator. Oh, for sure. But um, slash Game Boy color emulator, you load up ages and then I would go find that character, go tell them the secret. They give me an upgrade, which is no longer useful to me in ages, but they also give me a return password. And so you get early upgrades. I, or I, I got early upgrades in seasons as a result. Uh, and I was able to, you know, already start out, you know, like the mid game with um, decent supply of seeds and bombs, etc. Oh, for sure. It's, it's really cool how they have the system work. And I don't know how they did it, but it's like, they already know that you've got the password when you're coming back, unless they ask for it immediately. I don't remember. Um, it's It's been a while. Um, for those of you who can see what's happening, I am currently acquiring the winter season for my Rod of Seasons. I'm moving, pr- I'm moving through this pretty quickly. I told Ash that I'd probably finish with the second dungeon by the time we're finished recording, but I may be moving a little bit faster than that. <laughs> for real. Because I'm, I'm booking it. So, yeah, there was this whole new linked game experience to go through. Um, being able to encounter characters uh, who had uh, who you had met in Labrina. 
uh, or encounter characters that ordinarily appear in seasons, uh, but reference the fact that they've already met you before. Oh, yeah. They're like, hey, it's good to see you again, or what are you doing here? A lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, so the game throws in plenty of uh, additional content in the linked game in order to hammer the experience down as a, as a continuative experience. And I really appreciated the level of depth that they went into Godat because, I mean, while these games are, for us now, very easy and very short, um, I, I'm still surprised at the level of detail uh, and, and the, the quality. Oh, and they took forever. When, we're ki- when we were kids, dude, these games took me forever. It took me yeah. three months to beat ages the first time. Yeah, man. So it, it's hard. Well, it's not hard now, but... Well, and so, you know, the other thing too is that now, now where I'm at in my life, it's like if I play a game and I get to the point where I'm just like really stuck and I don't know where to go or what to do, I'll, I'll just go ahead and look it up now. And that also helps. But, you know, just in, in general, as you get older, games become easier. And as I've played more and more Zelda games, you know, yeah. Yeah. And these are kind of like base level intro Zelda games for those of people that aren't you know, familiar with the series because I didn't know what Zelda was and I started playing these games. So it was it was good for me to be able to kind of get into these games this way because, A, they were difficult for me to learn, but they were also fun enough for me to, like, walk around and discover new things and solve puzzles. And it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. So if you haven't played these games or if you're not really familiar with the Zelda series, this is a really good place to start. And Oracle of Seasons is a lot of fun because you can move through it a little bit quicker, but it's more detail oriented on like interactions with monsters and such. And it makes for a pretty intri- interesting experience. For sure, for sure. So, um, and in addition to you know experiencing the uh, the linked game for the first time, uh, I also was introduced to uh, Seasons' main gimmick, as mentioned earlier, which is the ability to change seasons. Uh, while the game isn't as puzzle oriented as Oracle of Ages, uh, I, I was satisfied with the the uh, quality of of the the puzzles oriented around changing the seasons. And there's kind of this really? sense of completion as you keep going back to the Temple of Seasons, acquiring new uh, uh, seasons. And so, you know, you kind of uh, have this this sense of satisfaction as you're able to cycle through different aspects of the world everywhere you go. Yeah, of course. And I, I actually like Season's story a little bit more um, just because I think Onox, uh, is it Nox or Onox? I don't, I don't remember. Um, he is a lot more imposing to me. I think that his final boss fight is much more difficult. And I don't know if you've gotten to that point yet, Ash, but he's tough. I have He's not. Very tough. I it's have not. it's it's fun, but it's tough. Yeah. So just prepare your anus. <laughs> Definitely prepared for it. I gotta say, it was refreshing uh to see new and unique items in, in these games. Uh you know, this ga- these games neither actually have the bow in them. Uh, instead, they have other projectile weapons. So uh, there are some Zelda conventions that are being broken here with uh, flagship, uh, the uh, Capcom and Nintendo joint studio uh, developing this. But what I was what I was even more pleasantly surprised by was the difference between ages and seasons and items. Uh, oh yeah. It's like, you know, the games are very similar, but the fact that there are different items or or items that get different upgrades or different items that get upgrades, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Really changes the whole experience up. Uh, did you have a favorite item in Seasons? Uh, my favorite item in this game is the Magical Boomerang. I think that it is dope. And I really like the fact that you can kind of control the direction that the boomerang is going in. I've always thought that that was unique. Either that or the magnetic gloves. The ma- the magnetic gloves are dope because they obviously differentiate between the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, I guess magnetic poles. Yeah. I guess that's what you call them, where you can push and pull metallic objects away from you, solving puzzles and killing enemies. And actually, uh, did you beat uh, the Crown Dungeon? Which one was that one? 
that's that's the dungeon you get the gloves in. Yes. Okay, so the mole boss, fantastic. My favorite item was the glove, uh, by yeah, far. Yeah. I, I, that's what I was going to say. The magnetic glove is is, is my favorite item uh, in both of these games. It was so much fun. The puzzles around it are really innovative. Um, well, the magnetic glove isn't in Ages. It's just in Seasons. Right. Uh, you're thinking of the power glove from Ages. No, no, I'm saying across both of these games, this is my favorite. Oh, item. okay, cool, 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 cool. My bad. Yeah, because that, and then that's why I brought it up too, because it's one of the items that's unique to seasons, and I thought that there were some really interesting puzzles with uh, that were involved in it with it. For sure, absolutely. Especially pushing and pulling yourself across gaps. That's one of yes. my favorite types of things to do, um, because not only is it cool to kind of push yourself over an open pit which otherwise you'd fall in and take damage from. There are some puzzles where you have to alternate which direction you're going over an open pit. And not only is it intense, but it's also kind of hard to pull off. Um, you'll see that a lot once you get to the seventh dungeon. Those puzzles are tough. Bro. Yeah, um, I I think I might have I, I might have uh, gone that far already. Um, okay, so the Explorer's Crypt? Yeah, actually, that's the dungeon uh, I think... Or, or I think that's the dungeon I'm about to get to. Uh, it's 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 very long. It'll take you about two hours to beat that dungeon. Yeah, it's a long boy. Yeah, so I completed the ancient ruins, um, dude. That's my favorite dungeon in the whole game. I it, love the ancient ruins. Oh god, the music was so cool, man. Yeah, and the mini boss is actually the same one as the one from Ages. You fight what's his name? Vire. That's Vire. That's his name. And when you do a linked experience, um, he remembers you, and instead of running away, he actually dies. And it's it's a little sad because oh well, I can't do this yet; it's too heavy. But um, Vyr is the only enemy that remembers you across uh, games. And beating him, you beat him twice. He like says it too. He's like, not once, but twice you've beaten <laughs> me. I can't do this anymore. Goodbye. And like he actually dies so a little bit of darkness there but it's still cool how they how they did that i don't remember this part <laughs> i always get stumbled right here on this dungeon this is the oh. second dungeon yeah this is the snake's remains yeah seasons and i know we mentioned it last time is that uh the game was originally developed as uh a remake of the legend of zelda uh or at least what would become seasons was that or a lot of elements of that ended up getting into seasons um a notable example of course is the fact that the gnarled root dungeon uh is in a tree in uh, approximately the same position, and it looks identical to uh, the first dungeon of Ze the very first Zelda. 
and even features the same boss, uh, Aquamentus. Is it Aquamentus or is it a Gleok? A uh, Gleok is until later. I've never actually beaten the original Zelda. Yeah, and the original Zelda, uh, Aquamentus is the very first one. Gleok comes later. Isn't the legend? Isn't the original Legend of Zelda kind of like an open world format? You can beat the dungeons in whatever way you find them. It's not like you can go to any one of them in any order, but yeah, you can you can pretty much at any given time in the game, um, there are different. You know, there there, there usually are going to be multiple dungeons that you can access at that point. It's still it's like a two hour game, right? It's very short. Yeah, I think you could get through it that quickly. Um, I remember, you know, back in the day, I think it probably took my dad and I longer too. We we actually took turns playing that. Never did finish second quest. But we did feat the 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 original uh, Zelda. Ooh, um, what is second quest? So it's it's basically master quest. It's a it's a whole separate mode where the dungeons are rearranged. Well, they're not just rearranged; they're whole new dungeons. Um, That's dope. With I'm with entirely different that. layouts and and uh, enemy placements, and they're in all different locations. So all the dungeons are like locations are swapped around too. So like level one. I think level one is still where level one is, but like level three might be where like level seven is. I don't know for, for sure. I'm just, you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a whole different experience and it's actually pretty cool. It's, it's like, you know, it, it's kind of similar to what like a rearrangement mod might do um, or, or basically what Ocarina of Time Master Quest did. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I actually never beat Ocarina of Time's Master Quest either. I haven't so beat I it should, either. I should definitely do that. I've heard it's, I've heard it's crazy hard. I've beat Ocarina many times. It's probably the Zelda game I've played through the most times, but um, I've never, I've, I've never completed Master Quest. Um, but yeah, uh, Seasons and Ages are also nice in that you know because they're short, so short and sweet. You know, there is kind of this, um, there, there is a sort of replayability to them. You know, you can kind of open them up later, and you don't even have to sacrifice a whole lot of time and invest a whole lot of your valuable time to game on it and it's gonna probably be uh the best time you're gonna have out of anything else that you're you're playing <laughs> depending on what it is you know it's going on can we talk about how fast i just shat on facade right there that was fast man that's crazy bro <laughs> I, I told you earlier i was watching your playthrough and i was like this guy's good holy shit and i was like oh yeah that's zach <laughs> dude that's it's kind of sad honestly how many how many times I've played through these games, but they're like classics to me, you know? I remember I used to have, I had ages, but my family, I couldn't find seasons and my family couldn't afford it at the time. And so I used to have dreams about this game when I would get to play it finally. And then I got it one day for Christmas and it was just the best. There they go. These little rabbits are annoying. Oh, fun fact. I don't know if you know this, but if you have a flute, these little rabbits, these little, they're like rabbit the pole, things. The Poles voices. Yeah. Poles voices. That's what they are. If you have a flute, like for Moosh or Dimitri or Ricky, they'll die instantly. Yeah, or the Harp of Ages and Ages. Um, yeah. At first, I was kind of at a loss because uh, when you face the pull voices, I didn't, I didn't have any kind of musical item. And then it occurred to me later the next time that I had Dimitri's flute, and I was like, oh, okay. So, uh, by the way, yeah, I, I picked Dimitri, and, and that was in Ages because I kind of felt like Moosh is supposed to be the default companion of Ages and Ricky of Seasons, so I was going to go for the neutral option to carry across both in my first playthrough. Yeah, of course. But I wish I had picked Ricky. Ricky is so much cooler. Wait, R Ricky's the best animal companion by far. <laughs> he is. I missed a key somewhere, so I'm going to have to go to bed. In fact, Dimitri's actually irrelevant um, partway through Ages because you get the mermaid suit. Um, at least he remains relevant in Seasons. That is true. I'm missing a key. So, and similarly, I would say Moosh probably becomes irrelevant in seasons because of the rocks cape. Uh, I would say he doesn't become irrelevant, but he definitely, uh, not irrelevant, but he definitely is not as needed. Th that was something else that was cool. You know, these games both have different items. So, like, you know, the uh, uh, Ages had the switch hook. Seasons has the magnetic glove. Uh, yep. They'll have different variations of items. So, uh, Ages has the uh, seed shooter, and Seasons has the seed slingshot. 
but uh, they'll even have different upgrades to some of the same items. So the switch hook, which is an Ages exclusive item, gets an upgrade. Uh, the mermaid flippers or Zora flippers or whatever they are get an upgrade, becoming the mermaid suit. But in seasons, the the uh, rock's feather gets an upgrade and becomes the rock's cape, which I remember uh, was in one or both of the Four Swords games. Uh, or no, 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 it was in the Minish Cap. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, the rock's cape is in the Minish Cap, and that rock's cape is ridiculous. Because realistically, in the Minish Cap, you don't have all of this side scrolling, like one frame per one room per frame, mm-hmm. I guess that's what you call it. And so rocks Cape can kind of sling you over long distances. And it's really cool, especially if you're using the Pegasus boots, which I think that's one item that could have benefited from being in these games was the Pegasus boots. Get the Pegasus some. seeds. Well, Pegasus seeds. Yeah. But I mean, those are limited. You can only have a certain amount of those. Granted, it's not, it's difficult to run out of them. Also, I have no, I don't remember where to go. Yeah. It, also, it is a design choice. And actually, I'm kind of thankful for it. You know, putting uh, powers locked behind that. In any place where, like, you're going to need to use a certain type of seed, ember seeds or uh, uh, pegasus seeds, you know, they're going to be supplied generally. Yeah. And then, like you said, they're hard to run out of, especially once you get the larger seed bags. I think I went through my Ages playthrough without getting a, a single seed bag upgrade. And I didn't realize that one existed in the game. But when when I got the password for it in uh, Ages, I realized that there was another upgrade in the world in order to get you the, uh, the, the, the third tier upgrade. So I actually yeah. unlocked both of those in, in the post game of ages when they were no longer useful. But I've been working through seasons with 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 mo- mostly through the uh, the second tier of uh, seed bag upgrades. And it's actually been nice because, like, you never run out of seeds. <laughs> well, out of curiosity, uh, what's been your favorite moment so far from seasons? Because we haven't really talked much about the story. Um, basically the game kind of starts the exact same way ages does. You spawn near, uh, the Oracle of choice in the game. Actually, hang on. There's a certain way to do this before the chest explodes. Yeah. Oh, you're doing the hero's cave right now. No, this is, this is the snake's remains. This is the second dungeon. This one has the, one of those puzzles too. That's timed. I couldn't, I didn't remember. Okay. Yeah. I do remember this puzzle. I just, I thought, I guess I, I thought I remembered it being in the hero's cave. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say one of my favorite moments in the game has actually been uh, playing through the hero's cave. <laughs> the hero's cave is fantastic. It's, it's also, I think you just get a ring for beating it. I'm not sure. Um, oh, that's, but those puzzles are tough, dude. Those seriously. I mean, I think it's kind of just more for, like, the completion of it. It's like, yeah, you beat this dungeon. I mean, most dungeons don't really give you tangible rewards besides the heart containers, so... True. Yeah, it, it is a very tough dungeon, and I like how it's an early example of a uh, of a returning Zelda dungeon in a game, like a central dungeon that you keep coming back to, which we later saw in uh, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. Yeah, absolutely. And I... For me, this game, my favorite part is uh, the going into the Tarm Ruins, I think is what it's called, and uh, going through the forest and getting the Sacred Noble Sword, because it's kind of like an aspect of the Lost Woods, which was lacking from these games, but Seasons kind of made up for that. I love The Lost Woods is always my favorite aspect of Zelda games. Like, for some reason, it's just, I, when I finally... When I can, I'm going to theme my office after the Lost Woods. Danielle and I have actually been talking about that. It's going to be pretty sweet. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, but the Seasons version of the Lost Woods is so cool because you actually have to not only find the correct sequence, but you have to change the seasons in the right order each step mm-hmm. of the way. And I thought Which that was really cool. It was it was it was a fun cuz like they'll tell you to to uh with each step the seasons have to get warmer. So you can't just go through the seasons and cycle. You have to think, okay, so we need to start with winter cuz that's the coldest and then move up to autumn and then move up to spring and then move up to summer. You have to actually think about it. And you have to move west each time. And that's just really to get cool. through the story. There's a separate way in order to get the uh, the noble sword or the master sword in my playthrough. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to do. 
I, or I guess that's where you get the noble sword in the in the original game. Uh, and you mean in the very first game? Okay, so in Oracle of Seasons, in, when I played in a linked game, I got the master sword. Right when I got through the the Lost Woods like segment, was that in the? That's near. That's the, Tarm Ruins. That, that's that's the, Tarm that's, Ruins. That's yeah. Tarm Ruins. Yeah. Yeah. So I I uh yeah I got the master sword. So I'm wondering, is that if you were playing? Oracle of Seasons as the first game, would would that be where you got the noble sword? Yes. Okay. So, uh, and what what about the bigger on sword? Because I did that trading sequence. Um, is that only? No that that is in both games. I just I got it via a secret in Ages. Yeah, uh, getting it. You, I think you can only get it by a secret in Ages. In Seasons, you have to climb climb to the top of. Uh, the section where the Gorons are. I, I still think. had to do that. I know. I remember. I still had to talk to Biggeron in order to complete the side quest. But yeah, we are in the boss room for the second dungeon. Nice. So is the guy on my TV. You actually caught up to him, and he started first. You're literally at the same part of the game. This is insane. <laughs> Fighting I'm the uh, King Dodongo. Also, what is up with Dimitri? Why is he different from other Dodongos in the series? I don't know. He He's uh, adverse to heat. He cannot be in heat, which is unusual because Dodongos usually live in heat. And he also uh, sw swims in water. He's like aquatic, which is a little unusual. So, you know, it's like, is, is Dimitri the one that's different or is that just how Dodongos are in the worlds of Labrina and, and Holodrum? I think that's just how they are. I mean, we're fighting King Dodongo right now, and his dungeon isn't, like, fire-themed or anything. So, I mean, neither was it in the first Zelda. But. The second essence being collected. Got it. Hey, gift of time. So, is the Hero's Cave different in both games? Uh, yes. Okay. The puzzles are different. Okay, because I... And they're just as hard <laughs> as the other. So another reason to go through both playthroughs of both mm -hmm. games, because, you know, the, you're going to actually get a, a different dungeon experience, which is represents, you know, the most difficult puzzles and toughest boss fights. I remember uh, Seasons has a room uh, in its uh, Hero's Cave where you have to step on the switches, and each switch spawns monsters, a bunch of monsters, and then... And you think, like, at first, maybe I just have to hit the right switch. No, it, you are you have to actually hit each switch um, and, and defeat every single wave of monsters. Kind of similar to, uh, I know there was, like, a mini dungeon in Wind Waker or, or maybe multiple that were like that. Uh, something like that, yeah. Where you had to go uh, into I, different rooms and fight waves of enemies. Oh, uh, what is that? It's to get one of the pieces of the Triforce. Yeah. Or at least one of the Triforce charts. It's the Cave of Ordeals from Twilight Princess, or uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's on Outset Island in the Wind Waker. No, I'm not talking about the, the Pit of, uh, of, or not the Pit of 100 Trials. That's uh, that's Paper Mario. Um, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Not the one on Outset, but there's actually a little mini dungeon. I think at least one. I don't know if there's just I can't remember if there's just one of them or there's multiple, but I know there's one on Dragon Roost Island, and you go down in the hole, and it's a it's a circular room, and there's multiple uh, circular rooms connected to it. And I didn't know that room. You go in, you fight a wave of enemies, and then you come back to the center, and then there's some kind of uh, collection reward for it. I part of me might have thought that it was one of the Triforce pieces or the Triforce charts, but now on second thought, maybe not. It may have just oh. been a rupee reward or something stupid. I don't know. But um, as you can see from my current playthrough, we've been talking this entire time, and I started from the beginning of the game on this playthrough, and now I'm already on my way to the third dungeon. You can get through Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons relatively quick if you know where you're going. Um, and I've beaten this game several times, but it's just... These games are so fun to just glide through quickly if you know how to play them. I love both of these games. I really do. I don't know what else there's much to talk about. You have specific um you have specific items for each game. You know, you have specific dungeons that are themed to 
the essences of nature and the essences of time. And I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think seasons might be my favorite game. Yeah. It's really good. It's really fucking good. They're, they're both really good, man. Um, I'll have to actually properly finish seasons in order to have an educated opinion on it. And I plan to finish the entire cycle and, you know, play through both games again in, in the reverse order. Yeah. I think that they're both phenomenal. Uh, I, I like seasons much more than I think I, I thought I would. I think with, with ages, you know, I'd played it several times before or quite a bit of the ways through it. So a lot of yeah. it was very familiar to me, but seasons was a whole new experience. Uh, and there was something a little bit more uh, enjoyable about that, about experiencing something for the first time and, and being surprised by it. Uh, of course that happened in the later uh, dungeons of uh, Oracle of ages as well. But yeah, I'd say don't sleep on these games. Um, they're easy to emulate. So easy to emulate. Like the Game Boy Color has no, basically takes no processing power at all. Yeah. Um, if you have a Nintendo Switch Online subscription, which I actually recommend, I think it's well worth the value. It's actually quite a bit more expensive than we mentioned. I, th- I think I said it was like 20 like 70 bucks. I think I said it was like $20 a year in part one or something. I was like, what? That's, I only, it's like 50 at least. I only pay it once a year. So, you know, it, it might have been like in the, like the first installment before there was the expansion pack and everything, which you need. But anyway, anything that's like yearly like that, I, I, I feel like it's not a big deal. It's like, OK, yeah. Um, I'm about to beat this dude's ass. And and it the emulator is actually really nice. You can you can instantly rewind. That helps with some of like like the dance segments in in these games that are uh, just you know not fun to have to do over and over and over again. Also with the RNG mechanics, if you're going for 100 percent completion, getting every ring and dealing with the the Gasha seed stuff. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. I actually really like the Gasha seeds. Uh, getting ring, you have to use Gasha seeds to get a couple pieces of heart. Yeah, you have to in order to get yeah, there's one piece of heart that that's in a gasha seed and there's one that's with maple, both of which depend on on uh, RNG mechanics. But with I save states hate maple so much. I used but to avoid to her. 30, you have to defeat 30 enemies for her to appear. So if you yeah. miss her, you got to kill 30 more enemies for her to appear again. And there's part of the trading sequence in ages requires you to bump into her and like give her a sad book and she gives you like an egg. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think it's an egg. Yeah. I, uh, I, I did the whole trading sequence and I got the bigger on sword. I remember that. Um, yeah, it must be annoying. Thankfully I'm playing on, you know, the, an emulator and it's, or, you know, Nintendo's official emulator, in fact, and it has rewind mechanics and save states. So it, it makes that whole experience easier because I can just, if I miss a maple encounter or whatever, or I don't get the ring I want, I can always just go back. I think with maple and the gusha seeds, though, in order to, to reload the, the, the RNG, you have to kill another enemy. But essentially, you know, you're due for an experience after you've you've killed 30 enemies. So you can just keep killing enemies and experimenting to see what you get so you can get that heart piece or that ring or that uh, that one uh, item from her. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that just that makes it a lot easier. Or rewind if, you know, if you just missed real quick. It's good for your pride, too, when you beat. Oh, I forget you can get two kinds of seeds, like, super quick in this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am blazing through this game, dude. But, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and give our final thoughts on Oracle of Seasons and the Oracle games as a whole. Uh, Yeah. How about you, Zach? I thoroughly enjoy them. I think that both of them are very fun to play. I think that if you're looking for a good, like, little time waster, then um, if you're looking for a good game to waste time with, then you're in luck because these games are super fun. They are super easy. Once you get past a certain like mental threshold in life, like as a kid, obviously they beat the shit out of me mentally because it took me forever to figure it out. But I think that as um, Zelda games go, they are definitely not to be slept on. Oh, damn it. They're definitely not to be slept on and they are incredibly fun. And I, I love them because they hold very special memories in my heart i've always loved playing these games and uh seasons is definitely my favorite of the two ages will always be uh the one i played first and the one i fell in love with first but 
Seasons is very enjoyable to me. The puzzles, the dungeons. There's not really much I can say without... Oh, I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. <laughs> there's not... Um, there's not much I can say about the game without kind of spoiling what happens. Even though these games came out back in 2001, I still think it's worth it to go back and experience them for yourself because they can become, they can give you nostalgic feelings very quickly. And with how smooth they are, this is back from a time period where games didn't have to be constantly updated because they were perfect right from the start. And this game does a very good job of showing that because all of the puzzles, the layouts of the maps, the enemies, everything is perfect and how it should be, just like with Oracle of Ages. And if you want a good experience that takes a long time to enjoy, I highly recommend Oracle of Ages and Seasons. It's it's a lot of fun and you'll be able to get lost in these cute little worlds because we're so used to the world of Hyrule that we never really we never really get to experience anything else. So it's, it's fun to kind of get lost in these games and I love them very much. They will always hold a very special place in my heart and I highly recommend them. And Ash, I'm actually very glad that you are able to take the time and enjoy them yourself. Um, because they're, they're Zelda games that everybody should experience. Everybody should experience the entire legend of Zelda series. Like, I haven't played Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, and I really want to, but I have a DS so I can get them. But these games are kind of in that same area where you can enjoy them and, you know, just kind of look back fondly on a time where video games kind of hit home. They still do, but older games just kind of remind you that we, we've come this far as people who play and people who make video games. What do you think, Ash? How do you feel about these? Oh, hell yeah. I think that these are uh, awesome experiences, just little bite-sized experiences. They're not going to take up too much of your time. I, I just, I would wholeheartedly recommend this to just about anybody because of that. Um, For sure. You can play through both of these games. If you, if you want to get hardcore, you can go and do like the whole, uh, you know, four game playthrough and whatnot. But uh, yeah, there's, a surprising amount of depth and quality for um, what are essentially, you know, I don't want to call them spinoffs, but, but spinoffs from the mainline Zelda games. Uh, yeah. I, I think that, you know, these are a lot of fun and uh, I can definitely see why people would have fond childhood memories of these. I mean, I do uh, at least through my experiences with ages. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying them, dude. I, I really am. I'm going to go ahead and save this so that we can kind of finalize our thoughts here. But I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying them. It makes my heart really happy to know that I can kind of share memories and share discussions with, you know, my, uh, one of my best friends. And I'm actually really excited. And I'm going to go ahead and say, if you don't mind, Ash, I'm going to go ahead and pre-plug before everything really gets started. Uh, within the next few months, I'm actually going to start my own YouTube channel. And I'm going to kind of plug collateral gaming slash collateral cinema into that and i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to starting a content creation journey both with ash and with myself where i'm streaming and playing video games and just having a good time and i will be doing a series called the legendary series where i go from the original legend of zelda all the way to tears of the kingdom um and i will beat every single zelda game i'm gonna try to 100 percent every single zelda game except for breath of wild and tears because there's no way in hell i'm going to find all of those korok seeds again i'm really excited because that process will begin within the next few months i'll build a new computer and we'll get going from there um and ash i'm really excited to share that with you i can't wait to get started because i mean we're still young and at some point you gotta take a step forward to do what you really want to do and this is what i've always wanted to do and i'm very glad that collateral gaming kind of gave me a step into that world because it's kind of changed the way I look at video games and how I view video games. And I'm very excited. Hell yeah, man. I'm really excited about that. Um, and, and that can be really fun. You know, as we get through the season, you can stream and play, you know, like whatever we're going to be talking about. And we can kind of experience that with our listeners. I've, I've been meaning to get a few, you know, let's plays or streams out myself. For sure. You know, uh, under the, the, the collateral gaming brand, but this uh, this month, we were set to uh, ha release The Witcher 3. So uh, 
apologies for the delay on the Zelda episodes. Those were due out in December, but we got that done. Um, hopefully at least get one of those episodes, uh, the, the Witcher 3 episodes out by the end of the month. And then uh, also our anniversary special. So uh, a two-part uh, episode on The Witcher 3 and a two-part anniversary special because this is our five-year anniversary on uh, Fable 1 and Fable 2. Uh, as soon as I find a way to play them, I'm thinking about hitting up a pawn shop uh, and uh, trying to get a hold of uh, whatever cheap Xbox console I can find that can play 360 games because I have the games. I just don't have a working 360 console at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um you said you were looking into getting a new computer soon, right? I was looking into it. I was thinking that once I got my tax refund, um, I would go ahead and buy that. I apparently, Our government is hot ass. I, well, here's the thing, okay? It's mo- more than likely because of the way like I set up my W-4 and like withholding. But I, I just got a lot less back. I've never owed it money on taxes ever but i'm used to getting a lot more i only got like after like the turbo tax fees and everything i'm like less than 100 bucks um so yeah that's not my money that's gonna buy a computer i suppose i should be thankful that that much money hasn't been deducted from my paychecks and that's why i've been getting paychecks as substantial as i have been but <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah that 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 is the uh the unfortunate uh, uh, nature, but all that means is that it's I'm well within my capabilities to save up for a computer. I just need to start putting money away, maybe like five hundred a month until I, you know, can afford one. Oh man, if you can afford to do that, that's usually the way to go. Um, and it's really exciting because if you get a new computer around when I get a new computer, where we can have dual streams and stuff like that, and that would be so sick. So, because I, I want to make a career out of it, and I love the job that I have now, but I don't want to do it forever because it's Monday through Friday, eight to five, and yeah. nobody really wants to have that life. But very few people are actually strong enough to push forward and do it. Just kind of accept what's happening, and I refuse to do that. So, no offense to anybody who's working a nine to five. You know, it's just that I don't want to do it anymore. I can't. I, I don't think anybody really wants to continue like the rest of their life. intends to do that the rest of their life. I don't. And I, you know, I have my nine to five, but, um, but yeah, uh, you know what? My present lifestyle affords me enough time to game, uh, to be able to play through games like the legend of Zelda, Oracle of ages and Oracle of seasons. Uh, by the way, Nintendo, uh, we've said it multiple times, uh, please release a remake. Uh, switch to hardware may be the perfect opportunity to do it. Just do what you did for to Link's Awakening to the Oracle games, package together. Uh, instead of having to use passwords, you know the progress could just carry over, so you could just jump into each game, and and yeah, and and progress would be tracked. It, it's the perfect opportunity. I, I hope they do it. <laughs> oh, dude, they need to absolutely. Thankfully, at least they do have a working version of the original game uh, on their their subscription. So, uh, yeah, this has been a uh, a good time playing through Zelda, man. I always love it. It was actually really, really nice to be able to play through a Zelda game I've never beat before. That's rare. Oh, yeah. To it's, get- a, it's a fun experience. Right? Like, how often is it nowadays that there is new Zelda content to get through? That's what I had the chance to experience, and I'm excited about it. And I had the chance to experience that uh, last year as well with Tears of the Kingdom. So I'm really riding the Zelda high at the moment. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And now you're watching me just kick ass. I am. So... Yeah, stick around for The Witcher 3 Part 1 and Part 2 as soon as possible. Same thing with Fable 1 and 2. Um, we will have to look and see if we're going to continue uh, February as planned uh, as far as our content goes. But uh, I am anticipating doing a game launch review on the uh, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy within the next week or two. Uh, Persona 3 Reload as well. Uh towards uh, pro- probably closer to the end of the month once we get most of our content out. And then um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is also coming out. I think we're going to be uh, doing our game launch episode in early March on that. So lots of new games still coming out. We're still kind of riding that like train that we were through 2023 into 2024, and it's great. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And... Uh... I know, Ash, I know you bore witness to what I just did to all those Bacoblins. That was wild. That was insane. 
Yeah, uh, there was a there was a gr- there was a blue boss bacoblin and a bunch of blue bacoblins, and I just wiped them out with a few shots from my uh, with a few swipes of uh, some stone like sword that I had. I don't even remember what it was called. But Based as fuck. I, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you guys listening, and I appreciate all of our listeners just kind of sticking around with us while we're you know just making things happen with the podcast. And it, it's it's such an honor to be able to do this, and I, I can't wait to see what the future holds as far as you know content happens. And now that I can stream, I can make even more stuff and share that with Ash, and it's just it's really exciting. Hell yeah, brother. I 100% agree with you. Um, also, expect a uh, end-of-the-year review uh, sometime by the end of this month or around that time frame. Uh, I would. I want to do a review on games that came out this year, just a short mention of, of uh, a few of them. Uh, and Zach, yeah. you, could, you could help me with that, uh, hopefully get Megan on as well, so we can talk about a few of the releases that came out this year that we just didn't do an episode on, but are worth mentioning. Um, even if it, you know, you just played a demo or a little bit of something, um, there are several games I've wanted to talk about. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that. You know, I'm always down to talk about content. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. But thank you for listening, and uh, stay tuned for the rest of our 2024 content, y'all. Uh, that being said, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, links are going to be in the show notes. Uh, check out our Patreon as well. Uh, we're going to be uh, recording some Let's Play video game commentary soon, actually. Uh, I know I haven't been able to release any recently, because as I don't have a working capture card, but Zach does now. Um, and he's oh, yeah. going to be streaming this shit, so um, we might go ahead and upload some of those to the Patreon and have some more uh, commentaries available. Zelda, I think, is definitely going to be involved with that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll definitely do a long play of Metroid Prime Remastered, too. I'll probably go through all the Metroids, too, but not the original one. I hate the original one. I hate the OG Metroid. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. Zero Mission is just a much better game. <laughs> yes, it is. And that is one game that I would like to stream. Also, I love this shrine so much. It is that that is a fun shrine. I remember that one. That one was so fucking cool. Alrighty. Well, we've bullshitted long enough. Um, I've been Ashley Chancellor. And I've been and will always be your friend. I'm just kidding. I'm Zachary Gio. <laughs> okay, Mr. Spock. Uh, <laughs> we're out. We're out, man. Thank y'all. Da, 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 da. Collateral Gaming is a Collateral Media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.